interested in that kind of entrepreneurialism and how to use free information and community exchange uh, by him about the Weather Channel. I was just wondering if the owner of Landmark has been interviewed or made any public statements about what's going on with the news and record. I don't know if the owner of Landmark knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that any sort of negative. Not, not a bad way. Yeah, right. Right. I, I, don't, I, don't, I have no sense that the, the big bosses in Virginia, and I don't even know if the publisher in Greensboro has signed off on this, and I think that's a key element. Whatever the corporate culture is of experimentation and entrepreneurship, this is an editorial project right now. Uh, there, in Dan's book, there is a mention of another sort of first blogging in a courtroom that went on at the Lee Malvo trial, uh, which took place in, uh, right outside of Norfolk. And the yeah. reporter who was blogging live from the trial, misspelling people's names and so forth, and then people with the comments would correct the names, and then it would show up right in the paper the next day. Um, that was also, uh, that was a landmark writer. Too. I mean, I'm, I, that's also, I'm not trying to put it all together in that way, except that it is connected that some culture of something has happened right between mm -hmm. these things to make, to make a lot of innovation happen there. But that doesn't mean it should stop there or that it will keep going there. I want to point out one thing about what's happening at the News and Record. It came from the independent right. bloggers of Greensboro. Good, it didn't good. come from the News and Record. Good. They get credit for coming to our blog conference we had in August right. and, and paying attention. And right. they get credit for running my URL at the kicker of my column, which is a link off site, <coughs> three years ago. Right. But they listened to the bloggers and to their community. They didn't dictate anything. That, this is great. That, wor that word is really important. That's where we want. Right? L list listen. And it, I, I believe that newspapers and the media in general have to get out of the lecture mode into more conversational. And right. the first rule of a conversation is you have to listen. Right. So newspapers have not been great at that, and big media, uh, TV is even worse at it. So got you, lots of hands let me now. go straight here. I'm Dee Marley. I'm, I, I have no blog. But I do have a, one of my big concerns is that I think that the news media in this past election did a particularly bad job with their coverage. I think there were a lot of stories that were really important that got drowned. What, what's the feeling about how blogging is going to help with that? Now, remembering that accuracy is really, really important and truthfulness is really, really important in journalism. So what role do bloggers have to play in correcting that? That's a multiple question. I'm going to throw it open to the room. But there are several questions there. One is, in the context of the elections uh, and what I think most people would agree was not journalism's proudest moment in coverage of, of, the, of the issues. Uh, what, can what role can the blogging world play in getting these issues to the fore? Secondly, uh, I, I was, I'm surprised it took this long for the accuracy and truth question to come up um, because that's just key and we you know, one of the things that, it, it's not like everything you read in newspapers is accurate to begin with, but there is a process that is aimed at making it uh, closer to accurate than uh, it would otherwise be. And uh, never mind all, the, I, the, the whole ob objectivity question is a, you know, we could spend a week on that. But I'd like to throw that open. What, what do folks here think the blog world could play, and uh, is, is it a matter of pushing stories, uh, pushing the pro-journalist to cover the things you want covered by using blogs in that way? I mean, bloggers are beating up on journalists on a regular basis. It's, a, it's become uh, one of the great journalism reviews. Uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Christian Stahlberg, I don't have a blog. Um, one of the really powerful potentials that I see for this technology is the participatory democracy, if you will. The fact that you have a conversation going on and that, that in the face of you know, media consolidation, increasing bias, partisanship, and so forth, I think you have the potential for people being able to express themselves and essentially voices of power and represent, true representation percolating to the top, if you will. And so it's kind of like a just-in-time democracy process there. How well do you think it's working? And the big thing, the, the yes, other sir. advantage of this is uh, communities of trust. I think we would all agree that it's one of the, 
the biggest problems with the net is trust. Who do you trust? What can you trust? For all the uh, all the investments in technology, in terms of identifying people that they are who they say they are, really when it gets right down to it, it's who do you know? Really know. The biggest problem is the scale of the audience. Most people are getting their news from broadcast television. They're getting their news from you know Tom Brokaw used to be. They're not getting it from the blog. So you know, the amount of influence that you can have is limited at this point. Now that may change, but. I, I don't know, I read some bigger ones, which I can't remember, of how many people were actually reading blogs out of the general population, and it's very low. Very it's slow, but growing quickly. So, of course, blogs are never going to have the audience of broadcast television. The thing is, the people who read blogs are journalists a lot of the time. This is like on Orange Politics, one of the ways that, you know, we don't have everybody in Orange County reading the blog, but all the elected officials and all of the reporters in Orange County read it. So, so we have a lot of influence that way. And so my answer to your question, Dan, is that I think blogs should act as media watchdogs. Personally, I, although we do occasionally <coughs> report breaking information or you know, are the first to report something, I don't really want the uh, responsibility that comes with being the, like, the source and having to be right and work and make sure and research and stuff. I'd rather be the media watchdog, just just like keeping the, keeping the paper real. So when they do when they do mess up or when we think they do, we say so. I wanted to ask a question because I didn't realize that the NNR thing grew out of the BloggerCon in Greensboro, where we sat there and just like hashed it out with them face to face. So I want to ask how many people in this room are professional journalists? Right on. Uh -oh. wow. How many are amateur journalists? <laughs> <laughs> how many don't? How many don't care about being journalists? How many are doing it for other reasons? That's this is important. That's the important one. I think. Yeah. How many journalists are citizens? How, what? How many journalists are citizens in our communities? Do you mean that do they look where they're reporting? Or do you mean that they participate in some way? They participate in the reason why they what? are journalists. Well, most, most large newspapers tend to cover wide areas, so in fact, everyone does it. Um, I take issue with what Ruby said about that bonds will never be the main source of news for people. Um, never is a really long time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I would put it back the other way. Can you imagine that there will not come a day pretty soon where we will all be getting all our news from each other instead of from Dan Rather? I mean, Dan Rather is expiring in March anyway. Um, and uh, do you believe that that was the first time they ever put up an improperly sourced article on CBS? I don't. I mean, um, I look to blogs to give me access to the expertise of the world that previously the reporters had an exclusive on. You know, if they want to call 20 people to assemble some quotes for a story, you know, they can. They have the time to call them. They will take their calls and they can, you know, publish their articles. But I would much rather hear from the 20 experts in full volume, everything they have to say about it, not sound bites, not incorrect, inaccurate quotes. There's so much noise. So I think blogs can can totally change the way we get information, and we'll totally change it. But let's go where you want to go. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> My blog is very, um, Cory Dauber ran his office.com. My blog is very speak, narrowly, speak up. My just blog is very narrowly defined. It's just media critique of stories about the war and the military, and occasionally bashing Deuce, but <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. That's what. Um, now, for some reason, my readers just don't comment. They're just, they just don't. Um, but for another project, I at one point requested that they email me and provide me a variety of information about who they were, why they were reading the blog, so on and so forth. And a large number of them did. So I have a fairly good sense of who the audience is and what that community is. And what I found is that in a number of posts, I can elicit comments. So sometimes at the end of a post, I will say, I think blah, 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 but hey, Canadians, I need, I need to know if I'm right or wrong. Or hey, I know that some of you have investigated air crashes. So if I'm correct about this, tell me if I'm right about the procedure and when the evidence will begin to come in. Hey, fight or fight, you know, whatever the, the community is. And so I can draw on the expertise of the audience. I can solicit their comments and in that way, you know, bring the, the community of readership to bear on 
expertise required to bolster the post. Did you get the Times to run a correction by doing that, the New York Times? I was one of a number, of, but yeah, I was pushing that. And the, the, by pushing Oprah to do that, we got Oprah to run a column. Uh, he forced an investigation from the Baghdad Bureau that, that would not have happened otherwise. I think the media watchdog role is really a good one. I, I fear at times it gets um, to a level of uh, just meanness that actually d distracts from the message. Um, it, I, I can tell you that it's, after years of being attacked uh, for one thing or another, the, I always reacted better to the, you're, you're completely wrong and here's why, than the, the messages that were sort of uh, just pure hate, you know, hatred and, you know, it, there's a thing that's going on now in, for journalists of being, feeling really under attack. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea to go after people who are getting things wrong, but uh, I encourage it being done in a uh, way that does not sort of set out to turn them off at the beginning. Uh, you had a comment. Go ahead. I'm afraid this has gone back a little bit. I'm, I'm afraid it might be a little right. less relevant. I'm David Warlock, and I do a blog called uh, Two Cents and a podcast called Connect Learning. I'm an educator, and my audience is predominantly K-12 educators. And I think, uh, and this is going back to the authority of the information that we're looking at, I think that what, what what I preach and what we've got to talk about is the fact that the very nature of information has changed in, in less than 10 years. And it has changed to the point where what it means to be literate is not just you know, being able to read the information. It's a much richer uh, set of skills than that. And, and I think we're seeing a major shift where, where you know, we were all taught to assume the authority of the information that we're looking at. What we've got to, to teach people to do is, is that it's not to assume it, but it's to prove the authority. So that's part of reading a blog or reading anything is, is you know, part of the task is to be able to think and prove to yourself that this is authoritative. If schools taught critical thinking, I'd be more l inclined to think that would happen. I, I'm, a li I'm a little worried about where we're going because schools resolutely don't do that anymore. Yeah, uh, up there. Then. Uh, I think uh, what is Coming next is the, is the era of expertise. Whenever somebody who's already known as an expert starts a blog, immediately gets thousands of hits, like you know, Posner blog and uh, Chomsky when he started a blog immediately, because people want to go to, to the place where they know there is an expertise, somebody who has an education in something. As I said before, I have my general blog. When I started the expert blog, I get thousands of hits. Well, I've got thousands of hits for three days or something. Uh, because that was unique and people felt that I had expertise. So I, I have a feeling that as far as uh, accuracy, the model is being uh, kind of coagulating is kind of a science uh, peer review model. You have to have links, like you, your paper has to have references. <coughs> it's work. People can check your sources, stuff like that. And it's, there's going to be, uh, like in, in scientific community, there's going to be a uh, blogger community that is saying, okay, this is right because there's a consensus, you know, 98% of the bloggers say, yeah, this is uh, correct because we've checked the sources and all that stuff. Uh, and I see uh, not just, you know, the wonderful example of the Greensboro paper, which means mainstream media, media experimenting, but also journalism uh, coagulating from the blogger, blogger sphere itself, and I see carnivals as a big deal there because a lot of those carnivals are specialized. I read a bunch of carnivals as a magazine, as a newspaper. His is kind of a newspaper because it has lots of topics. And there's a biology, there's a medicine, there's a philosophy, there's religion. I read it as a magazine. Some are weekly, some are monthly. Okay. It's going to be yeah. a start from there. Um, hi, I'm Fiona Morgan. I'm a journalist for the Is our job to verify things in a different way. There's a different threshold. 
Um, but I think we play really distinct roles. I think bloggers can do things about floating information, floating fears, <coughs> um, communicating with each other to check one another, and to check what we do also. Whereas journalists are, if, if we make a mistake, it should be a big deal. And you guys should tell us. Whereas if a blogger you know, misspells a name or gets something kind of wrong, that's less of a big deal because part of their role is to flesh things out. And I wanted to point out too, something Phil Meyer wrote in his in a recent piece that he did for USA Today was to talk about how um, a, a long time ago, in the sort of first era, I guess, um, it used to be that reporters would publish rumors that were unsubstantiated or there was sort of a bluff on their stories just to get it out there and just sort of <coughs> see what happened and see if it's true or not based on the responses that they got. We can't do that anymore and we should what, but what are you talking about? The New York Times does that every day with stories out of, out of no, no, wait, no, trial balloons are floated through the Times, the Washington Post, by government officials, and it's done by government officials in every community, floating something that's a trial balloon through local media. This is a standard kind of thing, not, Jim, not a different. For a long time. One of my concerns about, uh, the, about the notion of blogs uh, being a corrective on the media is that right now it's it, right now, for the foreseeable future, it will be driven uh, by interest groups and partisan purposes. The notion of what the blogosphere is is different depending on whether you're a Daily Kos contributor or a Freeper. Um, you know, so the the corrective is going to be coming from different coalitions of bloggers and commenters uh, trying to put pressure on different sides on establishment journalism. The only the only way I see that as being a net positive or, or, or in, in the sense of journalism that gets after truth as opposed to journalism being pushed by the interest groups is with something like the news and the record, which inserts itself in the conversation and allows the and allows uh, <coughs> and, and participates with the bloggers um, until the bigger media until the bigger media opens the doors to that sort of thing, then I just see whichever side of any given issue is better organized <coughs> has more of an effect than um, the facts speaking for themselves. This, these, this is really important stuff, but uh, let, me, let me push back a little bit on that. There are, there are folks who will, uh, who will worry at every little thing where you just don't have time to spend on, on every comma and every uh, you know, phrase in an article where people will spend, you know, a week literally deconstructing a piece if that if they're so moved to do it. Uh, so I, I I think it's you're right that it's media should be more engaged with this, with the community, the conversation. Uh, but the higher, the, the more powerful and uh, influential the medium, uh, and with the more readers, the less likely it is that they're going to have as much time as you might want them to, or as the interest groups are willing to divert their attention from doing other things. It's not a, it, it's not quite as easy to pull off if you're the New York Times. And the other question for the Times, and this is something they, uh, they, they, they don't make any disguise about, is that what the Times sells in part is it's. Uh, that what goes in the pages is stuff that they vouch for. Uh, sometimes they vouch wrongly, uh, as Jason Blair showed, but they fundamentally they really try hard. And they, they fundamentally do a, as good a job as any newspaper in the world. And uh, it's, a, it's a stretch for a company like that, for an organization like that to say, we're going to put stuff under our banner, but we don't vouch for it at all. Uh, I think they ought to at some level, but that's a that's a that's not in the DNA, and it's a difficult problem for them to solve. And I wouldn't expect it to happen right away. There, we had someone comes, over here. Let's ask me later. You say with the uh, one of the things giving blogs more reach is the syndication formats behind them. Uh, RSS, Adam. Uh, when I see CNN, uh, Reuters offering news feeds in syndication formats, they're recognizing that people are starting to make their news aggregators their news sources, which gives blogs an equal playing field, right? You pull up a, an aggregator and see the CNN article next to the New York Politics article. Um, that gives it a lot more of a voice. Right here, Ben's been waiting on. Um, ben Huang, Love Save from Bro. Um, I think the I think the one thing that people haven't talked about is um, the integration.
integration between bloggers and media. And the way I look at it is lately just observing. Uh, media has taken what bloggers say and posted it up as news. And it's like tell you know the, the, the you know long experiment of when you were a kid, you tell somebody something and then when you get down to the end of the line, you know, you hear something totally different. And that's what's happening. It's media is not um, validating the rumor right now. And if you're editorial, that's fine, right? It's your opinion, whatever. But if it's actual validation, that's not happening. And so I think what bloggers need to be is not only like um, like uh, Ruby said, like a media watch, but also they can be um, what in my field of telecommunications is called a first on application FOA. And it's basically saying, well, we're the first there. We can say whatever, but we don't have any facts behind it. And if you have facts, it's like, you know, it's like a weak wiki, you know. You can put it up and then people can correct it and whatnot. But in the end, what the media should be taking is the end result, the validated, you know, we went and checked it out and made sure everything was kosher before we <coughs> stick it on the news and tell the world. And I think that's what the problem is. Nobody's validating that. They're just, okay, well, well this blogger said so, so it must be true. Public up there. Um, I think the biggest problem that the media has versus bloggers is, I mean, twofold. One of it, too much of what we get from the media is evanescent. I mean, the link decay goes around. I mean, there's a story up for a week, and then it goes away, and you'll never see it again, unless you have access to Nexus, which most bloggers don't. And the second is, too much of it is locked up behind a registration. And what happens with bloggers, I mean, it may not make a lot of attention when you first post it, but it's there forever, and it's available forever. People looking for Thomas Wood's information, you know, two years down the road are going to be able to find Eric's stories about Thomas Woods. Whereas if he's covered in the New York Times, that stuff is gone a month from now. Um, the Unless the you best thing that bloggers can do is when they practice is to practice journalism <coughs> when they have the chance. Most of the time, you're not going to be able to. But if you run into something that you're actually able to apply a journalism standard to, do it to the best of your ability and just trust in the future. This this is gonna this is a fight that will be played out for a long time. It's uh, some.